Hi, Kubrick Lover, 1970 here, 1972 here. Um, <clears throat> just to preface um, this um, collection, the entire collection, it's going to take a while to get through it all. Maybe I said, said that before and I'm sounding a little redundant. But, um, yeah, there's quite a bit to go through. And um, um, even if I load up, you know, like a 20, 30-minute video, it, it it takes a chunk out of my Mac. And um, um, I think, well, no, I, people... People, friends, friend of, friends of mine and people at the Apple store, they say that um, you should have like 10 gigabytes, I think of RAM or whatever, to make sure the computer's working okay. And, uh, you know, so I could load, I could record more videos, but it would slow down the computer. So I have to take what I recorded, put it on YouTube, and then delete it off of my iMovie to, you know, uh, make to get space again to make another video. So, and then of course, if I want to delete that video to make room for, you know, the next video or next or next videos or whatever, um, I, I think it has to sit in the trash for a while, like a day or so. And then I have to, del then I delete it and then I could put another one in. So it might take several days, weeks. I, I don't know to get through this, um, collection but um and i don't know how fast i'm gonna do it um i guess it all depends on how things are going you know like if i'm busy or um i don't know but anyways enough chattering uh, let me get to uh the next part which is part five and this one i'm going to be uh d discussing um italian dvds and blu-rays i have so um Let's start off with uh, Roberto Rossellini's The War Trilogy, which is Rome, Open City, Paisan, and Germany, Year Zero. Um, this particular blue, uh, not a Blu-ray, it's a DVD, I'm sorry. Uh, this particular box set is so uh, loaded with stuff. I mean, it's just... I, I haven't watched these. I, I know they're like um, some of the greatest pieces of cinema. I, I assume that's Rossellini there. Um, but I know like Rossellini was the founder of neorealism. And uh, I think that I, I haven't seen this movie. I think it's part of Rome, Open City. But it's I think that's the mother gets shot by a soldier and the and the young son, you know, looks at, uh, you know, hugs his mother because she's dead, you know, and it's kind of traumatic. I think it's a famous scene in movie history. So maybe that's, I don't know if that's Rossellini or not. But I, I know this; these films were the beginning of uh, neorealism. Um, yeah, there, there you go with Rome Open City, where I think she's running to get her son. I believe some of this was shot in in the wake, uh, maybe actual World War II footage before the war actually ended. So. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's, um, that's, um, the war trilogy for you. Um, Paisan, I believe Fellini is in. He makes a, he makes a brief appearance. But I, I haven't watched any of this, this box set yet. In Germany, year zero, I think it's showing that, like, the bombed out, Cities, the bomb bomb buildings of um, of of uh, Germany. I guess Berlin, maybe. So that's a nice booklet. It's got this on the back there. 
and then you have the DVD. You have the DVD. You can start off with Rome, Open City. Eyes on. In Germany, year zero. The box has taken out like six minutes so far. Well, my yammering too, but because um, I've got a lot of, well, I got a fair amount of Italian movies. I got, I got a lot of, yeah, I have a lot of Italian films, you know. But, you know, like this box that takes a while because, you know, it's loaded with uh, all, all this material. Um, it's got video introductions by Re Re Roberto Rossellini from six, 1963. It's got interview interviews with Rossellini scholar Adriano Apra, film critic and Rossellini friend, father Virgilio Fantuzzi, and filmmakers Paolo and Vittorio Tavagni. Audio commentary for Rome Open City by film scholar Peter Bondanella. Once Upon a Time, Rome Open City, a 2006 documentary on the making of the historic film featuring rare archival material and footage of Anna Magnani, Fellini, Bergman, Ingrid Bergman, and many others. Rossellini in the City, a new visual essay by film scholar Mark Scheel on Rossellini's use of the urban landscape in the War Trilogy. Excerpts from rarely seen videotape discussions Rossellini had in 1970 with faculty and students at Rice University about his craft. Into the Future, a new visual essay about the war trilogy by film scholar Tag Gallagher. Robert Rossellini, a 2001 documentary by Carlo Lozani, assistant director on Germany Year Zero, tracing Rossellini's career through archival footage and interviews with family members and collaborators with tributes by filmmakers Francois Truffaut and Mar Martin Scorsese. Letters from the Front, Carlo Lozani on Germany Year Zero, a podium discussion with Lozani from the 1987 Tuto Rossellini Conference, Italian credits and prologue for Germany Year Zero, and Roberto and Roswitha, a new illustrated essay by film scholar Thomas M Meter, and Rossellini's relationship with his mistress, Roswitha Schmidt. And a booklet featuring essays by James Quant, Irene B B Bignardi, Colin McCabe, and Jonathan Rosenbaum. And I, this will take a long time to get through. I, I, this is quite a, you know, quite a, um, quite um, uh, a, it covers a lot of territory and, and, and the, it has so many extra features, so it will be t quite time consuming. So, it, at some point, I'll be watching this. Next is another Rossellini um, Taking of Power by Louis XIV. Uh, it's got a multimedia essay by Tag Gallagher. Author of The Adventures of Robert Roberto Rossellini, video interview with artistic advisor Jean Dominique de La Rochefold, and script supervisor Michel Padrosnik, video interview with second unit director Renzo Rossellini, Roberto's son. So this looks this looks interesting. I'm I haven't watched any Rossellini movies. I watched a bit of one of the Eclipse box sets, but I really haven't dipped my toe into the, you know, watching all the, I don't know if there's any pictures in here. I don't think there is. 
No, there's no pictures, just text. Next uh, is another is Ross, another box set of Rossellini. It's the Eclipse box set. It's Rossellini's History Films, Renaissance, and Enlightenment. So we have. I don't know if you see this a lot with Eclipse box sets, but this this particular movie, The Age of Age of Medici, Medici of the Medici, um, this is two discs, and it's 255 minutes, so it's really pretty long. I don't know if there's any pic. There's no pictures. See, it's just it's just text, and you know, and then next after that is. Cartesius. And you know the Eclipse just speaks, just has text, you know, the, the actual DVDs don't have any special features. So, you know, it's just some notes and that's about it, you know. So I'm looking forward to that as well. Uh, I, I watched a little bit of the Age of Medici, um, but and it wasn't because I didn't want to watch it. I don't know. I get it's, it's overwhelming. All these choices, you know. You got Netflix. I've got Movie, which is another streaming service. I've got um, ones I borrow from the library, ones I borrow from friends, my own collection. I mean, it, it's quite time consuming. Now here, here's a movie, it's probably, I have a lot of favorite movies, I, I think I said before that a, a top 10 list is really kind of unfair for me because uh, there are other films that could replace those in the top 10 that are just as good, so I have more like a four, top 40, top 50 or something favorite films, and this is definitely one of them, and Dean of DVD really likes this film a lot, I think. Um, it's, it's loved by a lot of film directors, Stanley Kubrick being one, my favorite director, Kubrick. And this, is, this film is, is, when I use the word, disarmingly simple. It's simple, and it's, it's making a profound statement about poverty and humanity and, um, you know, just justice, equality. Uh, uh, it just... Um, it's it's heartbreaking. It's 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 moving. It's um, anyways. It's bicycle thieves, and of course, it's another neorealist movie. And I, I you know, I I know that Pope Dean. I think you did a lot of uh, talk about this. You know, uh, oh yeah, Dean. I, I know you don't you don't like it when your DVDs or Blu-rays are kind of scuffed up or bent or whatever because that's why a fair amount of mine are kind of dented or whatever you know because I guess I'm I'm kind of I don't care about that as much I guess not that I not that I'd want it like bent out of recognition or whatever but you know just a little here and there wear and tear it seems okay to me um I mean the only case where I really I think ruined the dvd i didn't ruin the dvd it was the blue it was a blu-ray and i'll show that and further up in when i'm showing the videos but it was time bandits it had a, it had a lenticular cover and stupid me i put it in the tr i put it in the back seat of my car on on the um underneath the the, the um, rear windshield and the sun, you know, was beating down on it, and I think it was summer, and it just, you know, it, the lenticular cover, you know, bent. And the only solution to that would be to get a new one. I don't want to buy a new one. I just, you know, it, it, it just gets into more things. What if another thing gets like that or whatever? You know, it, costs add up, and before you know it, you're you're paying a lot of money, not just for things like that, but... Uh, Things add up. You have to you have to think you know about how much money you're spending. So, 
And that's the boy, the son in the film, and that's father and the son. And it's really a beautiful, emotional movie. Um, Because, you know, like, we all say that we would never do something like steal a bike. Um, it's sort of like, you know, Les Mis, you know, where this guy steals a, a um, loaf of bread because his family's poor and otherwise it's starved to death. So he's desperate. He needs money. You know, he's he's poor, you know. If, if he doesn't, you know, if he doesn't have money, he's not going to be able to eat a meal. But I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really saying stealing is a good thing. I've never stolen in my life, you know, but what I'm saying is this shows, you know, what happens when, you know, things aren't, aren't great, you know, like, what people do when faced with extraordinary circumstances, what they end up with. I highly recommend this movie. I know Dean does too. And, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, if you want to like, Watch it before you buy it. If you decide to buy it, um, I think I, I think a fair amount of libraries will own this movie. Um, but it's just an important movie to watch. I think definitely one of the greatest movies ever made. I think. Okay, so we've looked at that. And next we have a another movie from Vittorio, another from De Sica. Oh, by the way, the director of Bicycle Thieves is a guy named Vittorio De Sica. And um, <clears throat> he's, he's a neorealist director like Rossellini. He was in one of Rossellini's films um, where he plays an Italian fascist or maybe a person pretending to be an Italian fascist. Or maybe it's a little resistance. I, it, but it's a Rossellini film that was made later, maybe in the 50s, and it's a pretty good movie, but I just can't remember the title. You can Google it and find it. And... Um, that's not a bad movie, but Vittorio De Sica acts in it, and he plays the main character. And he's been in some other movies, like, um, I think it's Marcel Ophel's, um, uh, what the hell, uh, what was that movie he was in? Uh, it's a La Ronde? If, if you know, leave your comment down there, comments down there, maybe, you know, we can figure this out. Um, I can't remember the, the Ophuls film he was in. Uh, you know, I have that these days that, that I can't remember things sometimes. I, I get, you know, like memory lapses. Umberto D. This is a really good movie as well. Highly recommend this. <clears throat> this is about... Um, um, about an elder, elderly man with, with his dog small dog and um, he's living on a pension and this landlady she raises the rent and he can't afford it and you know like bicycle thieves he's in a desperate situation um, you know because he's 
yeah, I guess you could say like both of those films center on survival, you know, like how, how are we going to make it, you know, to the next day, you know, like Bicycle Thieves is the, the, the main character. He, he take he, his, his livelihood is hanging up posters and he, he gets a bike for the job, but he has to buy the bike and the, his bike is stolen. Then he claims this, then he sees the guy who stole his bike. And I don't, I don't know if I should give too much away, but, um, but a whole melee ensues and problems pop up. And, um, um, I don't, I'm trying not to give it too much away, Bicycle Thieves, but um, but but it's a story about survival. That's what it's about. And so is so is Umberto D. It's a story about you know trying to hold on to your dignity while it's being like um, taken away. That's a good sense of saying it. You know. Uh, So, um, anyways, um, I'm wondering if I should do some more or if I should stop it here. Let's see. You know what? I'm going to show one more movie and then I can do my Antonioni movies in another video um, after this. Because this movie I was going to show is going to be after the Antonioni movies. But I think I could fit it in this video, and then I'll go to the Antonioni films in the next video. So this one, I think it's a debut feature. It's Fist in the Pocket by Marco Bellocchio. And I've seen, I've seen one of his films, not this one, but a movie I watched one, which I wasn't too, I didn't think too much of. Um, it starred the guy from The Great Beauty. He was also in um, Gamora. I don't know, I can't remember his name. He's an older man. Um, Great Beauty I wasn't wild about, but I, I liked... Um, I think I liked uh, Gamora. I, I bought it. Uh, you'll be seeing it later on um, in the next vid few, few, few videos from now. So, um. oh, and by the way, um, Umberto D. Let's see what the special features on this are. Oh, we didn't even get to the bicycle thieves. Uh, Working with the Desica, a collection of new interviews with screenwriter Suso Sheshi, D'Amico, actor and Anzio, Enzo Stroiola. I think he's he's the boy. I watched that and film scholar Callisto Casolch. Life as it is: the neorealist movement in Italy, a new program on the history of Italian neorealism, featuring scholar Mark Scheel. A 2003 documentary on screenwriter and longtime Vittorio De Sica collaborator Cesar Zaffini, directed by Carlo Lazzani, and a book featuring new essays by critic Godfrey Cheshire and filmmaker Charles Burnett, Remembrances by De Sica and his collaborators, and classic writing, writings by Zavattini and critic Andre Bazan. And with Lamberto D, you get. That's Life, Vittoria De Sica, a 55-minute documentary made by made for Italian television in 2001. A new video interview with actress Mar Maria Pia Castillo. A new essay by critic Stuart Clawans and reprinted re recollections on the film by De Sica. Writings on Umberto D by Umberto Eco, Luisa Alessandri, and Carlo Battista. And Fist in the Pocket, I have no idea. I can't, I don't think I really know what it's about. But it's got new video interviews with director Marco Blocchio, actors Lou Castell and Paolo Pitagora, editor Silvan Agosti, and critic Tulio Kazic, 
video afterward by director Bernardo Bertolucci in the theatrical trailer, and a booklet featuring a new essay by film critic Deborah Young in an interview with Bellocchio. So we'll stop it there, and next up we're going to do some Antonioni films, and then <clears throat> after that we'll finish up the Italian films, the rest of the Italian films I have. You know, like I said, I might have some here and there and other places, but um, they might all be contained in that one area. So anyways, I'll see you in the next video.